Few aircraft have as great history as the B-39. An American Panzer ship for ancient heavy bomber that dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. During World War I, the Russian Empire pioneered the use of heavy bombers with Sikorsky's huge twin-engine Ilyugar Muromets against the Germans. And this aircraft was the beginning of the future strategic bomber era. A strategic bomber is a large aircraft that can carry heavy bombs over great distances to his strategic targets behind enemy lines such as factories, bridges, converts, airfields, railways, or even urban centers. By World War II, however, the Soviet Air Force was primarily a tactical air force focused on hitting targets near the front lines. The Soviet Air Force had only 93 new four-engine P-8 strategic bombers, while Britain and United States deployed thousands of heavy bombers. America's most expensive weapons program of World War II, the B-29 Super Fortress, a state-of-the-art strategic bomber. The B-29 outperforms its predecessors in speed, range, and bomb payload. The aircraft had defensive, remotely controlled machine gun turrets and a crew of 11 people. New B-29s were deployed to the Pacific Theater starting in 1944. Its great range allowed it to carry out attacks on the main Japanese islands, including the fierce bombing of Tokyo and culminating in the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. At the time, the Soviet Union was receiving planes from the United States through the Lance Lease Program. In 1940, Moscow twice asked to the US to send them B-29s, but Washington refused. Between July and November 1944, three American B-29s took off from China to bomb Manchuria and Japan and were forced to land in Vladivostok due to battle damage and malfunctions. The fourth B-29 crashed into the sea and was recovered by the Soviet Union. Although the United States and the Soviet Union were allies during the World War II, the Soviet Union was not at war with Japan at that time. The Soviet authorities then seized the American planes and refused to return them. American pilots also had to instruct Soviet experts on how to use the plane for several months before being released. Eager for a quick new strategic bomber, Stalin instructed the Tupolev Design Bureau to abandon its own design program and instead create a copy of the B-29. One captured B-29 was completely scrapped, while the other two were used for research and training purposes. As many as 60 design offices and 900 different Soviet factories were involved in this copying process. The Kron aircraft, dubbed the TU-4, 
was only slightly heavier than the original B-29 and had a few differences. Most notably, the TU-4 used ASH-73TK radial piston engines with 2,400 horsepower instead of the original duplex cyclone turbo supercharged radial piston engines with 2,200 horsepower. In addition, the B-29's 12.7mm machine guns was replaced by a much heavier 23mm NS-23 aircraft cannon. The TU-4 was slightly slower than the B-29. It only reached a top speed of 560 km per hour compared to 574 km per hour of B-29. But the Soviet aircraft had a better surface ceiling, 12,000 meters compared to 10,200 meters of B-29. The standard bomb road was also different. The B-29 could carry up to 9 tons of bombs, while that of the TU-4 was 6 tons. The Soviet Union then returned one of the B-29s in 1945. Two years later, the West was startled to see images of a replica B-29s in the sky. NATO codenamed the plane Burr and urgently had to plan to deal with the new Soviet strategic bomber threat. The first TU-4 regiments entered service in 1949. Two years later, a modified TU-4A became the first Soviet aircraft to drop an atomic bomb. The atomic bomb RTS-3 Maria with a yard of 42 kilotons was dropped near the city of Semiplatinsk, Kazakhstan on October 18, 1951. A total of 847 TU-4s were built by 1952 and became the mainstay of the Soviet strategic bomber force during the early years of the Cold War. However, the TU-4 did not have enough range to hit targets in the U.S. and return to base. By the mid-1950s, the TU-4 began to be replaced by the TU-16 Badger, which was powered by turbofan engines, and the TU-95 Bear with a longer range. The last TU-4s were retired by the Soviet Union in the 1960s. The decommissioned TU-4s were used to test new technologies. The TU-4 was used to test aerial refueling, electronic warfare, and radiation reconnaissance. These studies were then applied on the TU-70 and TU-75 transport aircraft. More than 300 TU-4s were converted into TU-40 military transport aircraft. Stalin gave 10 TU-4s to China in 1953 which operated until 1988. The Chinese Air Force even tried converting Chu to serve as its first early warning aircraft. Several Chinese TU-4s can now be seen at the Chinese Air Force Museum. The B-29 proved to be an adaptable platform in both American and Soviet operations. Once again, 
the experience of the Soviet Union has also demonstrated that the technological differences between them and the West are also very easily balanced. My video about Russian TU4 bomber ends here. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos. Tạm biệt và hẹn gặp lại quý vị và các bạn trong các video tiếp theo.